So, Mr. Barnes, are you still having nightmares? Okay, so let's talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and how it's already bringing up ideas of racism and microaggressions in the MCU. If you haven't scrolled away by this point, you're pretty much begging for spoilers. So parts of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show is based off of the all new Captain America run. This is where Sam Wilson took up the mantle of Captain America. And in that story alone, Falcon had to deal with the population that believed that Cap shouldn't have gave his mantle to a black man. And in the show, we pretty much see the same thing when it comes to Sam. Because even though Sam very well may be an Avenger, out on the street, he is still a black man that faces microaggressions every day. At this point, it is known that Steve Rogers gave Sam the Captain America mantle, but Sam donates it to the Smithsonian, and this guy said it was the right decision. Only so he can take it out of the Smithsonian and crown a new Captain America. Sam is an Avenger, he should be qualified for that mantle. But that's not all. Let's talk about the bank. First off, assuming Sam is a famous athlete before recognizing he's a freaking Avenger is problematic. Then getting a selfie with him while denying a loan, equally problematic. Just... Wow. This man just looks like the definition of white privilege. If you call this man out on his racism, he will definitely tell you he can't be racist because he is a black friend. He absolutely sings the n-word in songs. And if you call him on it, he will tell you that you're actually the one being racist because it's his race that's not allowing him to say a word. In a room full of white people, he will hi hello all the white people, but then girl, the one black person. He won't actually say black lives matter, but he put a black square on his Instagram for the day. He constantly wants to be invited to the barbecue, but when he shows up, it's with undercooked chicken and the only seasoning on it is barbecue sauce. He starts off every political discussion with not saying I agree, but just playing devil's advocate. He's definitely asked his black friends for the N-word pass multiple times. Let me start by saying I accept all John Walker slander. We do not like him here. It is expected. If you do not hate him, you need to, you need to get to step in. Let's start with the fact that he is blatantly disrespectful to two Avengers. Sam and Bucky have fought Thanos twice. They've gone against aliens, androids, and wizards. And John Walker has the audacity to say, stay out of my way like he's better than them. He is also far too comfortable with them. Calling Bucky, Bucky? And let's not forget, he doesn't have any super soldier serum. He is all bark and no bite. Just because you pull a random white man off the street and toss him in red, white, and blue and give him a shield that does not belong to him, it does not make him Captain America. He is in a cosplay. He's method acting. That's it. And I already know there's gonna be those people, oh, but didn't you, didn't you slander Steve Rogers? I sure did, and I still will. But I respected who he was as Captain America. John Walker is a disgrace to the Captain America name, and he- Three things about the Falcon and Winter Soldier. If you don't want spoilers, scroll. Number one. John Walker looks like he was at the Capitol on January 6th. Number two, um, how Isaiah Bradley was treated reminds me of the Tuskegee experiment. Number three, the fact that Sam Wilson was profiled in Baltimore and we almost got some police brutality where Freddie Gray was murdered. Yeah, that's all. No one can be Bucky's friend because he kills everyone he meets. <laughs> Why, why can't we be friends? Sebastian is the most boring person on earth. He's the only dude, when we were in Prague, he had a 106th birthday party for Bucky. That's cool, but he, had, he didn't invite anybody. So he had, he had a birthday party for himself, by himself. Sebastian Stan, everyone. Isn't it crazy how the calendar has changed this year? Like, it used to go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, WandaVision, Saturday. But now it goes Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Saturday. Isn't that crazy? We're such a mess together. You make me lose my temper. Who's the man? You're the man. Strong, healthy, black man. Huh. dun 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 can you move your seat up? No. You couldn't have done that earlier.
God, what if when he sees me, I like him and he knows it, what if he opens up a door and I can't close it? This Valentine's Day, here's a couple of things from a couple, couple of guys. guys. Rule one. Always make sure to give a gift instead of receive one. That makes you a good person. Rule two, be yourself always and forever with anyone and everyone. That's very nice. Always, always remember number one. But always kind of keep in mind number two. Number two has a heart day, too. At the end of the day, it takes two to make things right. Hi. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you too. You look great too. Oh God. All right. Three, two, one, go. Cut the check. Don't touch my sweet spot. Squatting is my passion, not my purpose. Cinderella, cause she broke, homie. She just she represent me, yo. Let me borrow twenty dollars. <laughs> Obviously, Chris had America's ass, um, but it's not just about your asses in the MCU. There are a lot of asses on the Avengers. Uh, let's take a look at some photos, and you tell me whose ass this is. That might be Sebastian. That's the littlest ass in the universe. I'll give you a hint. That, that, is, a Brit that is a British butt. That is not Sebastian Stan's butt. And it's certainly not Tom Hiddleston. Why not? How do you Looking know? more feet on those bones. <laughs> Wow, that's a strange butt. It's Benedict Cumberbatch's butt. I could see that. Yeah, there it is. That's Sebastian. See how there's no cuff on that ass? That's Sebastian. Sebastian, is that your butt? That, that, that might be it, just because I know those jeans. Apparently you're sharing jeans with Tom Hiddleston, because those are Tom oh. Hiddleston's. Oh, oh no! A coming of age is come and gone. Suddenly the summer, it's clear. I never had the courage of my convictions. As long as danger is near Where's the fight? And it's just around the corner, darling What do you want? In me. No, peace. I can never give you peace It always ends in a fight Five seconds you see, I hear a lot of people saying how they don't want Sharon to be in a romantic relationship in the show and that, like, it might just detract by making her a love interest again. Well, I think she could have a nice relationship. Let it simmer. Spy girlfriends. Oh, God, what if when he sees me, I like him and he knows it. What if he opens up a door? So, um, y'all know I had to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> James... Okay, tiger photos. Anyways, for those of y'all who do not know what I am talking about, there is a scene where Bucky's talking about online dating and Tinder, and I mean, ew, but he says something really interesting. He's on a date, but it's a favor for someone he owes. He tried the whole online dating thing. It's pretty crazy. A lot of weird pictures. I mean, tiger photos. And for those of y'all that weren't on Tinder in the mid 2010s, which is a lot of y'all, it was like, Every guy wanted to look like a traveling adventurer. Dude bros who wanted to look cool were posting tiger photos, and so Tinder had to ban them. Dudes. Bucky was looking at dude profiles. Again, Bucky was seeing dude profiles. James Buchanan Barnes was looking at dude profiles on Tinder. Bucky likes dudes. So everyone's already talked about Bucky's uh, tiger photo moment in the first episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But could we actually talk about how cool it would be for them to actually, like, dive into this? Bucky's a man who was born in the 20s, grew up in the 30s and 40s, fought in World War II. Imagine his definition of sexuality during that time. And then coming out of the ice fully as himself in the 2010s. Going from the 40s to pride parades is a big jump. So I really think it'd be interesting for Bucky to explore his gender and sexual identity in the context of the 2020s, coming from the 40s, especially since Bucky's character is bisexual in the comics. Especially adding it to the context of PTSD and racial inequality that they've already started with this show, it's just another layer that would make the show even more fascinating. Remember when I made you ride the cyclone at Coney Island? Yeah, and I threw up. This isn't payback, is it? Why would I do that? Break my soul into 
looking for you, but you're right here. If I can't relate to you any more than who am I related to? And if this is a long haul, how'd we get here so soon? Close my fist around something delicate that I shatter you And I'm sitting on a bench in Coney Island Wondering where did my baby go The fast times, the bright lights, the merry-go Sorry for not making you my center My lover's got humor She's to giggle at a funeral it's an incredible story that just perfectly captures the human spirit. You know, it's an expression of depression um, and of the resiliency of the human condition, and that's just why I love it so much. Uh, I like seeing the gay men fight because it's fun. Where is that picture at? It's St. Patrick's Day. We really don't give a fuck. It's not a major holiday. It's really not, bitch. You act like it's fucking Damn. Christmas or something. Fuck you in, St. Patrick's Day. Bongo la Bongo cha cha cha, parla mi del Sud America. Quello che dicono laggiù, forse fantasia e nulla più. Bongo la, bongo cha cha cha, è davvero così fa. So it's come to my attention that the Russo brothers have said that they are open to releasing a six hour version of Endgame due to the success of the Snyder Cut. Don't fuck do that! Unless y'all are gonna change what happened at the end of that movie, don't do it. I don't want it. I don't want it. In conclusion, no thank you. Uh, y'all, today feels like a good day to remind y'all who Arnie Roth is and why he's so important to the MCU. Arnie Roth is Steve's childhood best friend. Pre-Captain America Steve Rogers, he stood up for him in Brooklyn. He served with distinction in World War II. He marveled that he had undergone such a successful transformation. They grew up together, their families were like a second home to him, his single mother worked to support him, they were inseparable. He is openly gay, Jewish, and one of Steve's true friends makes him the target for Baron Zemo. When he gets kidnapped, he is brainwashed and does a song and dance for Cap, and he's like, I can't believe I'm gay, I think the reason that you like him is because you're one of us. The original Bucky Barnes is Captain America's teenage sidekick who dies, Steve goes through a huge depression, and then he comes back as the Winter Soldier. In the MCU, they're best friends who grew up together, same age, Zemo. They combined backstories, and if you don't believe me, ask the creator of Arnie Roth. Arnie's backstory was used for Bucky in the Cat movie. MCU Bucky is based on a canonically gay character who overcompensated with women. Hmm. Oh, you don't like that? Or do you just not like me? Sorry I don't treat you like a goddess, is that what you want me to do? Sorry.